and welcome to some more seven days to die and today we're going to be looking at gun mods and how they work on your weapons now you might have heard about this uh, in some previous videos or in other people's videos about that now you have all these mods that you can apply on your weapons and i think it's really really cool because the gunplay has taken a huge step forward so all the weapons within one class are not always the same you used to have shotgun and the shotgun is a shotgun now you can have a shotgun that works a certain way you can have a magnum that works a certain way an smg that is uh, sort of pimped out with the mods that make it work in your case and the way you want it to have so the way you do this is that each quality level has its own um, amount of uh, modifier slots so a uh, quality one has zero and a quality six has five some people have been reporting that when they craft them it seems to randomize some of these so something might be going wrong there but it is something that i'm sure the fun pimps are working on again it is an experimental so even on a blunderbuss you can actually uh, attach some mods and as you see now that i go into the modify screen the ones that can fit on the blunderbuss, all of a sudden they're blinking green with the cogs and the gray dot one will not fit. So if I try one of these, it doesn't work. If I try this one, it works. Look at this. You can have a blunderbuss, which has a 2x scope. Not that you necessarily want to do that. Uh, so let's take that one out again. And uh, so we're going to throw away a blunderbuss. I don't like that one. So let's take that one aside. And the same thing works for all the other ones. You have a pistol, which can have these. Marksman rifle can have these. And it's actually pretty interesting. Um, marksman rifle by itself doesn't have any scope anymore. So you have to find a scope. Now, they, uh, the actual mods that range from the barrel extender to silencers, sights, uh, scopes, and you have, you know, bipod and foregrip. You even have some kind of uh, ammo modifiers as well. And of course, you have some shot uh, shotgun stuff, uh, magazine extender, etc. So I'm going to go through these ones more or less one by one. And we're going to see which weapon we should fit them on. So let's start with something like a barrel extender. And it says that it increases damage ra range and aimed accuracy so let's have a look at the xml file and all this is in the item underscore modifiers xml file so if we look here it says well the damage fall off range well goes up and the max range goes up but also the hip firing goes down and i guess that sort of mimics what it says in the game where it says that you know hip firing is uh, not as good so um, you can go into the XML if you really want to see what each of these one do. So let's say let's say we add on the hunting rifle. So we modify and we pump it in. Right, done, complete. Um, now if we look at it, I don't think it really looks different. Let's, let's have a look at it actually. So if I take this one out. Now, so this one doesn't modify the visual. Some of them modify the visual, obviously, like a scope, right? But it means that if I shoot something, it has a slightly better range, but hip fire is a little bit worse. So you have to sort of take that into account. Um, let's go look at the, the next one. So the next one is the muscle break. And it says that it diverts the propellant gases to reduce recoil. And I guess that's good. And if we look at the XML, well, we see exactly that. The vertical and the horizontal recoil has been lowered and of course this can be very useful when you are shooting multiple shots and um let's see maybe we put that on the assault rifle so let's do this and which we, we just pump it in and actually you can just shift click and it'll go in as well unless there's something there if i try to shift click in this flash suppressor it will not work it just shifts in my inventory because the slot is already taken for uh well, I guess for the end of the barrel adjustment. And uh, yep, let's close that. And let's see what else do we have. Well, we had a, a flash suppressor. So what does it do? It reduces the muscle, muscle flash, makes it easier for you to see and harder to be seen. Well, I guess that can be interesting. So what does the config uh, file say? Hmm, well, it doesn't really tell very much. I mean, it says that there's no particles for the muscle fire. So I guess it's a little bit difficult to see yourself. Uh, but I guess uh, because the zombies can now see you, if you're using this one at night, for instance, maybe they cannot see you as well. So let's say, let's say we put this on a sniper and we pop this in. 
flash suppressor so they can't see it at night. Because maybe it's um, that if you're shooting uh, in the dark and you're having this on, on, well, if you don't have this one, maybe they can easily see you. Now let's complete this one as well. And again, you can't really see anything on the model itself. Silencer, the silencer is pretty interesting actually. Um, it says that it reduces the sound and you can actually hear that as well. Um, let's do, let's reload this one and let's listen. This is the sound it makes, but if we put in the silencer, let's complete, let's reload. Oops, sorry about that. And we listen. The sound is definitely different. And if we go into the XML file here, you'll see that it does have a silence fire. So the actual sound has changed. Now, of course, it depends on apparently on uh, which weapon it is, because I believe it actually changes the the model itself. Let's see if it really does that. Maybe not all of them. So if I remove it, yeah, it does. If you look at the here, you'll see that it actually seems to change a little bit. There's a slight protrusion. That's cool, that one changes it. And uh, yeah, you'll see that uh, the damage uh, apparently is slightly less. So it does uh, do less damage and you have a fall off on range and the max range goes down. So if you're having this, it should be on a, on a weapon that is being used in a short range because obviously it makes it less effective on range. And the next one, let's look at the laser sight. So this one is really interesting, actually. And uh, when would you use, let's say we want to use this on a pistol. So we pop this one in here. And this one definitely, let's see here. You don't see anything. And they hit F. Let me walk up here. And you'll see, oh, and they fixed this. You see the the red dot in the previous word version uh, when you're looking it actually the dot would be like offset uh, somewhere to the side here instead so now okay I need to reload oh yeah well that's pretty nice actually you can actually see where it is this time oh that's pretty good so uh, let's look at what it does in the XML so it says it overrides the cross here oh that that's good and let's scroll down to see it adds better on the well the your <clears throat> your spread of the on the hip multiplier goes down so it's good and the weapon handling goes up and also has uh, let's see here attach prefab oh yeah i guess the actual item itself um let me see if i look if you look underneath here let me modify it you see it attaches to the model of the the gun itself so that's really weird. You look at uh, the dot, it's now in the wrong place. Not where it should be. I don't think it really matters for the shooting itself. I think that is still correct. But somehow, when I modified it again, it's, uh, yeah, no, it's offset in the wrong direction. Okay, so that was the problem I had previously. So maybe they haven't really fixed that. Oh, anyway, maybe it's just a bug. Can't really do much about that. The next one is the flashlight. And of course, you can imagine what a flashlight does. So let's, uh, let's zoom. Can we do that on the Magnum? We can. All right, let's put the flashlight on. And we have the Magnum. And of course, this can be useful. Whoa, this is really bright, actually. Ooh, it's a hugely bright one. If only it was dark. Let me see if I can fix that. Oh, yeah. Whoa, this is really bright. It's like the old mini bike. <laughs> it feels like it's maybe too bright considering it's just a small flashlight. It was an issue um, previously in the other alphas that the flashlight was uh, felt like it was not really that useful. But now it really feels like it's, it's good. Unless it's my helmet. Am I wearing any helmet? Let's take that off just to verify. Now, it is. Okay, so that that's really useful then. I mean, you can see well, and now you see them. Of course, it also means that all of them can see you. So that's not necessarily what you want to uh, have done. Let's see if I can shoot him here. 
yeah so uh, let's look at the xml of course the xml doesn't say very much except that this is an attachment and it depending on which weapon it is but it does mention that you have uh well you have the the, let's say on self-equipped stuff and i think this got to do with turning the light on and off so i think it can be really useful when you're exploring but of course you have to be a little bit careful um, because if it's at night and the zombies don't see you then well they're definitely going to see you after you turn on this really really bright light okay let's turn this off for now and now we're getting into the scopes and the scopes are really really interesting um it's something that i wish that they had previously but now they've sort of allow you to craft 2x scope 4x and 8x and they all work the same way except of course they magnify a different amount so let's see if we put uh let's put on the on the pistol let's see what we can do here let's put oh you can put a 2x scope on the pistol and you complete and then wow it looks nice and then you can you can <clears throat> can zoom back and forth so you just have this one I right, now I have to reload. I wish you didn't have to reload every time you do that. It's a little bit annoying. But at least it gives you a little bit better control for when you're well, sort of sniping with the, the pistol, I suppose. Um, what I wish that you could still see your stamina. Uh, these and everything vanishes when you do that. So I can't see how many shots I have. I can't see my stamina. And I think that's really annoying. <laughs> Because you don't necessarily know how many you have left in the gun. And you don't know what your health points are. If someone is beating you or being attacked or what your stamina is. So yeah, I wish that's something that they would um, they would fix. Show these things even when you're zooming in. And if we're looking in the XML, you'll see that there is a small... Well, mod gun scope small, which has a, a fixed uh, zoom. Which is different than the, I think, the 4X and the 8X. And then you'll see you have a less of a spread. So the spread gets better. So that's pretty good. All right. So let's look at the medium one, which is the 4X one. And where should we put that one? Let's say we put that on the hunting rifle. And put this on here. And, and you see this one. I can actually zoom a little bit like the old sniper rifle. Of course, I have to reload. And the model looks pretty good. I can zoom in a little bit and I can try to uh, miss the headshot there. Maybe I should video edit that out. All right, so the headshot damage in the in the game is less than it used to be. It used to be fairly good. Something like 7x for, I think, the hunting rifle and it no longer is. And if we look in the XML, you'll see that... Um, you have a different zoom. You have a max zoom is 30 and the, uh, sorry, max zoom is 20 and the max zoom out is 30 and the max in is 20. So you have a little bit of play there you can work with. Uh, it also shows that the spread is less. And I guess that's because of uh, longer distances, then you don't want to have the spread because then you'll miss what you're aiming for. And uh, the last one is the 8x scope. And let's put that on our sniper rifle or the marksman rifle which is not very good otherwise um one thing i didn't cover actually but the more you put on mods the way it works if you look at uh, the damage it's 50 here by default if i add one thing it gives 56 if i add another thing it gives well six plus six plus six so an extra 12 and it doesn't really matter what i add here it's going to give me extra damage even colors actually and if i do that i let's say i put a green one because this is in, pretty important to know uh, let's say i add on a color the handling of the weapon is better it does more damage so if you find dice put them on your weapon they become better and that's pretty important but anyway, so now we have the 8x scope on the sniper. And you see, you can zoom in, you can zoom out. So it's pretty good to be able to do that. And because the sniper, you have multiple shots, you can keep on shooting. Again, you don't necessarily see how many you have left because, well, it doesn't show up and then it'll reload. So if we look into the XML itself, you see it's the large scope. And it goes uh, max in is 10, max out is 20. And then you have 
let's see the spread is 0 0.6 less uh, so it's actually a fair difference so for at longer distances you definitely want to have an XF x8 scope now the next one is a reflex one and i actually really like the reflex one let's say i put this on my uh, assault rifle let's put the reflex sight and you see the damage of everything goes up and in this case the handling also goes up I of course it tells you what it is improves weapon handling as well so it's not just the scope itself and uh, this can be pretty good so let's finish this one and let's shift and let's do a reload and you see it looks pretty cool actually on the model uh, it's uh, the animation is a little bit weird it sort of like bounces back to way too far towards your face or something um, but other than that it looks pretty good it looks like it has that red dot in the middle as well and you see it becomes a little bit more stable and uh, the handling is a little bit better and it is a little bit easier to shoot when you're having a I think having a reflex sight compared to just having like this I mean this works but it doesn't give you as a good uh, target acquisition or whatever they want to call it so let's put this back and we have that one uh, the next uh, actually and let's look at the XML file and this is where you have a fixed fixed zoom so you can change it obviously and you have let's see you have the weapon handling goes up as well so that's that's useful as well now you have three kind of interesting ones you have the trigger group semi burst and full auto and what they mean is that if you put on trigger group semi you can no longer do full auto burst. If you put burst, you end up doing burst instead of uh, full auto, which can actually be quite useful. And if you have full auto, well, then the gun has full auto, but only full auto. It doesn't do burst, obviously. So let's see. Let's do semi. Let's see. All right, let's show the SMG, which obviously has a full auto already. And this is what happens. And if we put on, let's modify, and let's put on the semi. And we reload. Now what this means is that if I hold in the button, it shoots once. It only shoots once. So this can be useful for some weapons. Um, I'm not really sure why you would turn it into a only semi-auto. Because if I modify this one and take it off, and then let's reload. I can still semi-auto if I just tap fire my, my, my gun, right? right? I'm still just tap firing. But if I hold the button, then of course I shoot more. But I can still semi-auto just by tap firing, right? So I'm not really sure why you would actually do that. Now, something that is a bit more interesting though, uh, and this is what I like, is the, the, the burst firing. So let's put this on the AK-47. So for some guns, and I think the AK-47 is one of them, um, you don't want to go full auto because you're using up so much of the ammo. But but if I click the button now, it'll give me three shots. And that's uh, pretty useful, actually. I find this when I'm using it, uh, even if you're, you're just uh, hip firing, it can be quite useful uh, at not wasting ammo. And if you have a pretty good gun handling, then you're not full autoing and you're not just shooting singles. So I find the burst one pretty useful. Um, at least that's my view. It's one of the more useful ones that I really like. Now, and then we have the little bit of an interesting one, which has the full auto one. Now, what it does is that, let's put this on, uh, let's put on the pistol. So I do full auto. And you go like, wow, that's cool. You have a full auto pistol and let's shoot. And this is full auto. But if I just tap fire it, that was just tap firing. So do you tell in difference that this is holding down the button? Well, because the, <laughs> the actual fire rate is so low anyway that it doesn't really seem like it's a huge difference. Now, so by itself, just having the full auto, it doesn't really seem to help that much. Now, what you can do, you could add on the rod and spring replacement. And that one does, it increases the rate of fire. It does increase the recoil as well. But let's say you put it here on the pistol. And 
another pistol is a pretty good uh, burst fire weapon. At least on, uh, you know, nearby zombies, right? Uh, of course, uh, you might not want to do it really far, but even with the scope, it works pretty well, actually. It sort of becomes like a... What I put it... A quick firing a small rifle or something uh, with a scope and that's pretty useful. Now if you just hit firing it seems to jump a lot but if you're scoping in because the scope reduces the, the, the spread it seems to be more accurate. Maybe that's a bug maybe it's not but that's pretty useful actually. And uh, if you have a look at the oops if you look at the XML here, you'll see uh, that Trigger Group Semi has the burst round count of one. You have the Trigger Group Burst, which has the, ba the round count as three. And let's see if you have the group automatic, then the burst round count is 999, which obviously is the max. All right, so we have the Rod and Spring, uh, which we can see that does. It increases the rounds per minute by one, which doubles it. And of course, you have a degradation, which I think is the, the recoil. So if you look at the pistol, uh, just the default pace pistol, this is how it fires. Now let's do this. Let's modify it. Let's add on the rod and spring. And of course, let's uh, reload. And then we fire. And now all of a sudden, you know, it's like an SMG kind of thing. Not quite as good, but it's pretty good. It's uh, definitely something I could imagine myself using now. If you zoom in, you actually have a pretty good gun handling as well. And I think too good, uh, too good gun handling uh, because your recoil seems to be pretty good when you're hip firing. But when you go into the scoping, it's like it, it vanishes. The recoil is a lot less. And you would imagine that the recoil would be worse to handle because you have a, you know, the distance goes up. But it means that you can sort of um, sort of snipe these ones. And um, let's take it off here again. Another place where this one is really useful is on the SMG. So if I look at the SMG here, it fires really fast. And if I go in and modify it, let's do this. Let's uh, reload as well. Let's put in some bikers. And then you have this. Now that's pretty fast because these ones have a lot of health points, but you know, this is pretty good. I mean, it makes it really fast firing, which might be really useful on Fortnite, for instance. Of course, you're burning through ammo really fast, um, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I think it can be really useful on Fortnite because yeah, you're just tearing through these zombies. Now, of course, you can do that on your AK-47 as well. Um, you might not want to do it on your marksman rifle because that has a single fire anyway. Now let's look at the next one. Bipod increases aimed accuracy. So let's look at that one. It says the spread multiplier while well, aiming goes down, which is good. And the weapon handling goes down as well. Hmm. That's interesting. So let's put this on a weapon. Let's say, let's say we want to put that on your marksman rifle. So we pop this on. See the weapon hand that goes down. So obviously running around with it, uh, shooting no scoped is worse. Let's do a reload here. And uh, so if you're just shooting like this, the weapon handling is worse, but at distance better. You're supposed to having less recoil, which makes uh, distance shots a little bit easier. So that's pretty good. Now it's a little bit too bad that we, you know, all we can do is crouch. <laughs> we can't lay down and you would imagine being able, able to use the bipod when you're prone or something, but that's not how the game works right now. Now the next thing we're going to look at is the foregrip. So it does increase, well, it improves handling and aimed accuracy. Let's put that on our assault rifle and let's look at it. Weapon handling goes up. Let's remove this one. So this one is uh, what it is now, plus 21%. And put this one, in, I think it's because of, no, not this one. Oh, it's the reflex side, okay. So we put in this one, and they go, of course the damage goes up as you notice, and the weapon handling goes up as well. And let's see, we put this one here. 
And some of these things you don't necessarily see a huge difference in um, in the on the weapon itself, and the handling might not be extremely. Um, evident what it does but that's why it's nice to look into the xml files so if you look at the full grip uh, you know you can see it has a multiple the multiplier while aiming you know it's better crouching better hip firing walking etc is better so everything is generally better um and you have less of a less of a kick which means the recoil at uh, both vertical and horizontal so rega regardless it means that just in general the handling of the weapon is better so it just means that it's better to use and i think this is probably one of the better uh better mods out there that i i mean I, I like it because it does help with all the aiming that you're doing and if you combine this with a uh, full auto burst for instance or you know the rod and spring you know at least uh, it might be a little bit more manageable and then let's go let's look at the retracting stock and it says improves weapon handling while moving or firing from the hip because it becomes more manageable in close quarters so I, I guess that's supposed to be good. And let's look at this and it says, hmm, it doesn't say very much. So maybe this is something that has not really, um, maybe there's no effect. It doesn't really say anything. At least XML is pretty empty. So I'm not sure whether there was this one does anything. Still, if you have a weapon, you know, there's no harm putting it on because, oh, I can't put the retracting stock there. Can I do this one? Okay, either way, look at the damage. If I put this on, the damage goes up. So either way, even if no of the other values, the range or the handling changes, the actual damage goes up, so you might as well just put it on. And now we come to some of the shotgun items, and we have the duck bill, and that one is pretty interesting. I think it's quite useful. So let's look at this one. We put it on. Of course, the damage goes up as always. And this, the damage here is per pelt. And I think there are 10 if I'm not wrong. But let's look on the XML file. So we'll see the dock bill and what does, well, you see the spread changes. So horizontal, it goes up, but vertical, it goes down. And what does that really mean? Well, let's go into the gun actually here. And if you look at the cross here, now it's spread out. Right, so if I shoot here, it's going to hit somewhere around there. And why would you want to do that compared to, let's see if I remove this one. Right, you see this one is the most standard one. So why would you want to use this one? And um, the answer is uh, maybe not always as self-evident, but it means that when you're aiming uh, this way, you're more likely to hit... Of course, up and down, you might be a lot more likely to miss. But generally, if you see, uh, let's do that. Let's bring in a couple of zombies here. Uh, zombies that are attacking you, they're more likely to be sort of in the same area with their heads here. Right? So if you shoot like this, you have a chance of hitting multiple, right? Uh, and if you want to do headshots, it's easier if you can just adjust left or right versus having to sort of adjust all over. So if they move slightly to the right or slightly to the left, you're still gonna hit them. So it's a, it can be pretty useful uh, when you're shooting at, at, at zombies. Now there's another one, and this is the choke. And this, you see, modifies to a horizontal pattern instead of the normal one. So let's uh, go in here again. Let's take this one out. Let's do the choke one. And you see, it goes down. Or did it? Let's check that again. If I take this one down. Yeah, it goes down. I think the whole thing will become smaller. So let's modify this one. Come on. Choke. Complete. So the whole thing is smaller. So what does that mean? Well, it means that the panels are likely to land in the same place, but uh, because now it's uh, the spread is smaller, it also means that if you miss, you're more likely to miss with all of them. And so we sort of have to do that trade-off. If you have a small spread, more of them might hit at the same time, but if you miss, well, then you miss. And that's, um, sometimes it's good to have sort of a bigger spread because uh, at least you're gonna hit something. But if you have a small spread, then if you miss, then you miss with everything. And you see that here as well in the XML file. You see that for the choke, you see the spread, both vertical, horizontal, goes down. So it's a much more tighter grouping for, for the choke. 
And now we come to the magazine extender. This one is actually really useful as well. So if we look at the AK-47, it's got a regular magazine of 30, which is good. Now, if you put on this one, let's modify it. Let's pop this one in. Let's reload and it goes up to 45. And we can see that in the XML as well. It adds 50% of magazine size. And uh, yeah, no, I, f I find that really useful because it means that you can go around shooting a lot more without having to reload. So it's useful for, for weapons that already have a pretty good capacity because, well, you can gun down more of the zombies without spending time to reload because sometimes reloading is pretty slow. Pistol can be useful. Shotgun, Magnum, uh, maybe not. I'm not even sure we can use it on the Magnum. Maybe not. Uh, marksman rifle, probably not. Hunting rifle, no. But I think especially on the SMG assault rifle and the pistol, this is really useful. Now let's look at the sawed off barrel. So we're in Alpha 16 and early on, you had two different shotguns. You had the regular shotgun and you had a sawed off one. And uh, here we basically just have a regular one and then you can mod in this one. Now this one takes the place of the the choke or the dark bill as well but you see the range goes down but the damage goes up so uh again it's the trade wall the damage goes up there as well so what else does it do the range goes down well, that's interesting i thought it's going to do something more let's look in the xml file though let's bring that up here so we see here max range goes down the fall off range goes down obviously and the spread goes up okay so that's what it shows and why do you care well if you look at using the shotgun at short range using it like this is really helpful because whatever you're running around you're likely to hit right? it's, it's difficult to miss because the the spread is so, so large now let's assume you want to uh, want to shoot slightly longer ranges you might say hey i'm just going to use the choke instead because it tightens up the spread right See, the spread is a bit better, so I'm not going to be so close as, uh, let's say I'm not clearing buildings, but maybe I'm standing up on a wall or something, then this one can be really useful. Of course, it also means that if you're not very good at aiming, you're more likely to miss. So you can really decide that yourself. Or let's say you want to go, oh, modify. Let's pop this one up. Let's do the duck bill and say, hey, no, I'm pretty good at aiming, but I want to be able to potentially hit multiple zombies at the same time. Now, you are supposed to be able to do that because all the panels are supposed to be in the same. Can I do that here? Yeah, you see, I hit, I think I hit both of them here. Potentially, so you can potentially hit multiple of those, but at least you'll be hitting sort of um, head level. You're not going to hit them in the chest because um, the sizing of the, the spread is sort of horizontally smeared out instead, like a duck. Bill. And that was a headshot. So we have two final mods, which is more like ammo mods. I don't think they're fully implemented, but they seem like they can be pretty cool. So we have the Feel the Heat, mod gun melee, Feel the Heat. And uh, what does it do? Well, the XML says each successive shot within two seconds does extra 10% damage. Well, that sounds pretty good, but there's nothing else. I don't think this one is fully implemented yet. I think they're still figuring out how to do it. But you can imagine that uh, now you put this on your weapon. Let's put this on my AK-47 and let's reload. You can imagine that it increases uh, the damage by 10% for every additional hit you do. So you hit extra, the damage goes up. Now maybe they tie that to this only the same zombie, but uh, that sounds like it's a pretty good good thing. That if you keep hitting the zombies, the damage goes up. Not yet, but at least it sounds like something that could be pretty cool. And the last one I want to cover is the cripple him. And the description says there's a 20% chance to cripple the leg on a bipedal target, which means obviously maybe not a dog or something. So let's put this on the shotgun and let's pop it in here. And let's reload. And while we're doing that, let's have a look at the XML. Now, this one does say <clears throat> that if uh, holding item has tag, so it only works on a shotgun. So I don't know why I can put them on these other weapons. Maybe they haven't properly tagged it, but it does seem to show that there's some buff. Let's say value 10%, 8. So I don't really know exactly what these one do, but I think the aim is that if you shoot the zombies, you might cripple them. And I think that's nice. Let's see if I can get any of these ones crippled. 
Yeah, I guess he's crippled. I mean, even if it just increases it by 20%, it means that uh, the zombies slow down. You know, they walk slower, assuming it works. And if they walk slower, then they run slower. So if you're fighting a horde or something, it can be really useful. Now, I don't know where this one is fully working because it doesn't really seem to be crippling very much. Well, I guess that is a cripple. Maybe it is 20%. So that sounds like it can be really, really useful. Uh, maybe it should depend on which mob it is. But yeah, I mean, crippling them like this, they go down and they take a while before they go up. So sort of like uh, knocking them down, except that it's uh, a crippling instead. Obviously, shotgun and everything can knock them down as it is. But if you can both knock them down and you can cripple them, that means that... Uh, your survivability goes up. Let's stop this one here. And I think it's either way, it's a really nice thing uh, adding on some of these kind of ammo mods because you can imagine having multiple stones that sort of bleed or that better against radiated or, you know, like this in this uh, case, uh, crippling them. Maybe this should only be the shotgun slugs. Who knows? Uh, but I think it's nice that they're putting this on here. And uh, of course, all of these ones are not fully implemented. It's still experimental, but it shows a little bit of what can be done here. But I hope you've enjoyed this uh, little walkthrough of the different mods and which ones do you really like? Oh, my workbench here. Which of these mods do you really like and which ones don't you like? And uh, what additional mods should they be putting into the game in Alpha 17? Let me know in the comment section below. And of course, you did like, right? And you've already subscribed. Good. Excellent. Thank you for that. That really helps me. And I'll catch you again next time. Special thanks to the great patrons supporting the channel. If you would like to join the vetted community and support these videos, do follow the Patreon link.